This is part two of our interview with Ignacio Leiva, where we explore Latin American vaping regulations. If you haven't already watched it, go check out part one of this interview on the GFN YouTube channel. Uh, let's go now to countries like Costa Rica, Panama and Ecuador. Can you briefly summarize the regulations? What differences in vaping cloud do you see in each of them? I know what's going on now in Ecuador. They have um, they are treated as tobacco product in the law. The bad thing with that is that in Ecuador, tobacco products and vaping products and accessories have, hear me well, because this is not a mistake, 300% taxes. 300% in taxes. What makes barely impossible to let the industry survive. In the past, I'm not uh, defending tobacco. We are all against tobacco. We are we are defending the the not heated nicotine products, THR uh, products. But to understand how difficult it's for little jobs, there was a huge uh, industry of tobacco in Ecuador, like. Um, um VAT have production plants there, Philip Morris have production plants there. But after this change and the huge taxation, Philip Morris and VAT went out of Ecuador. They are not having business anymore inside of Ecuador. And the same happened to the little jobs. If something like Philip Morris or VAT are not able to survive with this amount of uh, taxation, um, it's impossible for little jobs to to survive um, needing to pay 300% of taxes. What happened with that? Many of the jobs were closed, but also many of them continue working. I know it's difficult for people in Europe to understand these situations, but they continue working, but just not paying the taxes, finding the way to do it um, against the law. And the position of the government of Ecuador, I must say that it's very disappointing because they made this law and they said that it kept being a success because people have lowered down the smoking rate in a 60%. But it's not true because they are basing this cessation in the amount of taxes that they got. But what happened in reality, it's that the black market have been growing and growing and growing and the users keep smoking, keep vaping, but the government got no idea how many people still mo smoke. If you're looking not how many people it's continue smoking, only how much taxes the people it's paying. There is a huge um, problem there. Uh, the products don't need, I mean, the vaping products um, don't need any kind of res registration. They just pass uh, through and they just about to pay the taxes. So the market continue. There is a huge black market in Ecuador. It's time bigger. Um, and even many of the jobs are working beside the, the law more than respecting it. Then we have the case of Costa Rica. They also have, um, they are treated by like tobacco products. Um, there is Asovape Costa Rica. Um, they have been working very hard in the process, but anyway, um, the anti-vaping organizations supported, we all know, by Bloomberg, um, Tobacco Free Kids, and all these organizations have a lot of power. They are paying, um, some months ago, they put a new taxation on vaping of 25%, and now they are discussing for... Um, Wait a second, I need to sing the word in English. Um, plain packaging. They have now to put 50% uh, of um, warnings in the packaging, but now they are fighting for plain packaging for e-cigarettes and vaping. 
anyway, the market it's going quite okay. There are jobs there, there are online jobs too. There are no problems for the users to access uh, to the product. Panama. Panama is another case of uh, products treated like um, tobacco. Uh, this was a decree that was made on 2014. The biggest problems that they have is that um, they have restrictions for the importation. Sorry, 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 sorry. Just, yeah, yeah. They have um, restriction for the amount of importing products for the users and for the um, for the industry, you can only import three items. So you need to get a lot, a lot of packages. It's like if you're a user, you can get one device and two e-liquids in one packaging, but make it um, very hard. In Panama, they are very, they have a very strict law over tobacco, what affects also um, the cigarettes. And you can't vape in any place where you can't smoke. And in Panama, there are barely no places where you can't smoke. So in theory, you can't vape barely anywhere. In the practice, as many things in Latin America, it doesn't work like that and people smoke and vape everywhere. Are there any Latin American countries with no regulations Actually, we... or with regulations in progress? Actually, we have mainly three countries that are going through a uh, regulation. It's Peru, Colombia, and Chile. They have some little difference. In the case of Colombia and Peru, they don't have any kind of regulation today. And what it's not forbidden, it's allowed. I, the, you understand what I mean? If the law doesn't forbid something, you are allowed to do it. So actually in Peru and Colombia, there is a very healthy industry. There is a lot of jobs. Uh, users don't have any problem to access to these products. Paraguay have a different um, perspective and point of view. They have now a regulation that it's uh, not treated as a tobacco product. It's a little close to TPD. They have many things that are very close to TPD, like the 20 milligrams max uh, nicotine. They need to register every product, what has been a little problematic for the industry because the process, it's very slow to do it. But the biggest problem that it's in Paraguay now, and that's why it's not like super good that have this kind of regulation, they put something very not fair, I would say, that it's that every single job that will sell e-cigarettes need to be registered. Something that not even tobacco needs to do. And they expect that every single place where sells a cigarette they have in the they need to have in the nominee of workers um pharmaceutical chemical to process whatever they think that they need to process like in a pharma um and that's too expensive for many many um many, many tops and places that will be selling e-cigarettes. So that's the biggest uh, travel that they are facing now. They have also an association of consumers there, Asobe Paraguay. And what they have told me is that the things are going in a very good way, trying to put down this restriction. They have a meeting with the minister last week, and they said that it went very, very okay. So we're expecting that that very bad situation in Paraguay goes down. Anyway, until now, Paraguay have a very healthy 
industry, the users can access easily to products. We all know that Venezuela lives in a, under a dictatorship, so the things works very different. They applied a regulation over vaping, but it treat them like a product. It make it equal to tobacco, but it's more based in the economy side than than in taxation and that kind of stuff. So they have a regulation now. We are very happy for the people of Venezuela, but it's difficult to explain or to try to apply because it's obviously when you live outside of democracy, um, the processes are super different and it doesn't have to do with the pressure of the civilians or you know what I mean. It's difficult, but they have also a, a regulation, and we are very happy that the industry is working out in Venezuela. What about your own country, Chile? Situation in Chile is a little different. Even if there is no regulation on vaping, on 2010, there was a decree with force of law made by the Minister of Health that put the nicotine in hands only of the pharmacies. So in Chile, the only way to sell nicotine is on pharma. That was done on 2010. We all know that uh, big pharma is one of the biggest enemies of e-cigarettes. So you can imagine how many milliliters of nicotine have been sold in 13 years in Chile. That will be zero because obviously what they did with this uh, decree was just to block, uh, a way to block after they couldn't ban the e-cigarettes in Chile while they were trying to ban it in Brazil, Argentina and Peru was the same in, sorry, Argentina, Brazil and Uruguay was the same intention in Chile. We were lucky to be able to fight on 2010 they were not able to ban e-cigarettes at that moment, but in a very dark and hidden move, uh, the Minister of Health made the ESP, that it's the Institute of Health Public, make this decree, putting the nicotine kind of in a very gray side. So even if in Chile there is a huge market of e cigarette with a lot of... Um, formal and online jobs, um, they can't sell nicotine. But as many things that happen in Latin America, it means more that they shouldn't, that they couldn't. So you can access uh, the products in Chile. How does it affect users of safer nicotine products? Now we are in the process in Chile of fighting for a good regulation. There were different projects of law, some in, the, some in the Chamber of Senator, others in the Chamber of Deputy. Finally, they all merged now in one discussion. That discussion has been very, very hard in Chile. We have a very big pressure from the anti-vaping side that want to have, that want to treat the cigarettes as a tobacco product. During the process, it has been really like a roller coaster. Sometimes we are very high, sometimes we are very down. We are in the middle of that. Um, what I could say about the last movement uh, in Chile, finally they put us in the law of tobacco, in the tobacco's law, but we were able to fight to have a very clear differentiation between cigarettes and e-cigarettes. Actually, we get out the, the word e-cigarettes, and now we are talking about um, electronic systems uh, of nicotine or electronic system without nicotine. And there are five points that are very hard in the fight. Three of them, we just win them some months ago. 
what have to do first with the differentiation between tobacco and electronic cigarettes. Then it came the advertising article where they want to forbid it in the same way that they, they have forbidden the tobacco publicity. We were able to advance a lot in that situation and there will be restrictions on the advertisement on e-cigarettes, but they were not able to ban it and they won't be able to ban it if this doesn't change in the process of this project of law because it will be inconstitutional. Um, there was a third uh, thing and I should be happy, but I'm not. The last article that we were discussing in Chile had to do with the um, warnings in the packaging and the government totally lost that article. We, 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 we were really able to, it shouldn't be used this word in politics, but that's why you will understand that I'm not happy about it. We totally smashed them in the discussion. They were like totally, totally down. And it was 100% good for vaping that part of the article. So I'm a little scared what will happen with the two articles that we need to discuss further. Uh, one have to do with the levels of nicotine, maximum level of nicotine. They want to put it in 20 milligrams. Uh, but also they want to put a maximum amount of um, size of e liquid to be sold to, 20, to 10 mLs, but they want to apply it on with nicotine or without nicotine, what it will affect very bad the industry, the users, but also it will be a very huge problem for the environment. It, we are talking about putting off tons of plastic uh, with these kind of uh, resolutions. And then we have the last article to be discussed during the next month that it's about labeling. They want to forbid uh, to set in the labeling that um, e-cigarettes are less harmful than normal cigarettes. So that's the situation in Chile. We are in the second part of the process. Uh, the main pro project came from the Chamber of Senators. Now we are discussing in the Commission of Health of um, the Chamber of Deputy. And we are there. We are there in the fight, advancing some days more, some days less. But we hope and during the end of this year or starting the, yes, in the next year, we will finally have a regulation for e-cigarettes and at least we will be able to to know what are the rules to go through. Are you worried that the regulations may end with banning safer nicotine products? In the case of Peru, they have three projects of law actually running. There were a lot more, that, but they have been um, being placed or together. There are two that are very bad for vaping. Both of them try to um, treat e-cigarettes as tobacco products. But there is a third one that it's being uh, placed by Asobe Peru. There is also an association of users. Um, and they're in the middle of the discussion right now. And we are hoping the best for Peru. In the case of Colombia, they are very advanced as Chile. Um, they are discussing right now the fight there. It's being held by Francisco Ordonez from Asobe, um, Colombia, also president of ARDT. They have been doing a very good work. Uh, what it's something that it's for sure in the case of Chile and in the case of Colombia, that there is no way to go to a process where the e-cigarettes could be banned or something like that. It's not something that worries us or it's a risk for those countries. We are more looking forward to have a, 
um, regulation that it's um, taking care of the concept of THR in the projects than having a total ban or having very big problems in the future. We really expect that those regulations will go very, very well. They have advanced both in a very good way. And we hope that we won't have very bad news uh, soon. Anyway, uh, the legislation pro process are not a science. So you never know until they ended how, how it will be. Thank you, Ignacio, for your interesting summary. That's all for today. Don't forget to book your place at GFN23 to join in the THR discussion yourself. Tune in next time here on GFN TV or on our GFN TV podcast. Thanks for watching or listening. See you next time.